Put not your trust in princes, in the children of men, in whom there is no salvation. Blessed is he who hath the God of Jacob for his helper, whose hope is in the Lord his God. I tweeted out several verses from that famous psalm yesterday, after it was officially-ish, at least, announced that Donald Trump is conceding the presidential race. Such a statement could seem harsh, though that wasn't exactly my intention. Even the greatest princes of men are not worthy of you putting your final trust in them. And that is, of course, the point of the psalm. Granted, Trump has hardly been the greatest of princes, but he has also hardly been the worst. Now that we're at this predictable end of the Trump presidency, I think it's useful to look back at what these four-plus years have been like. On one hand, it might seem somewhat ironic that I have been pretty invested in the most recent happenings surrounding the president. Not long before the presidential election, I was quite apathetic over the whole thing. I didn't really think it made much of a difference. And in the big picture, that still might be true. And five or so years ago, back during the Republican primary process, I was a boomer con, and I wasn't a big fan of Trump. I was a Ted Cruz supporter back then. He seemed like basically the perfect boomer con candidate. I remember then I was one of those insufferable people who said that Donald Trump was not a real conservative. I eventually came around, and I certainly did support him during the 2016 election. And eventually, I can't really remember when, I came to realize that Donald Trump was clearly a superior candidate to Cruz. But that marks at least two times when I've felt quite apathetic towards Trump. The first was when he was initially running, and I wasn't sure if he could be trusted to be a quote-unquote true conservative, and the second was prior to this election. Though, by the time the election came around, my opinion had turned around a bit again, and I was hoping quite strongly that he would win. Though, one great irony, I suppose, is the reason, ultimately, why I was unhappy with him in 2020 is not that he governed too little like a quote-unquote real conservative, or at least what I would have considered a real conservative to be like back in 2016. But really, the problem is he governed far too much like that. Now, certainly, there's certain mainstream conservative things that he did not push for nearly as much as the mainstream pundits would want him to. But for the most part, the main accomplishes he had were things which the conservative establishment were pretty happy with. Judge confirmations, tax cuts, deregulation, and of course, support for Israel. And the problem isn't even really with those things in themselves. The problem with how Trump governed is that he focused on those things to the exclusion of the much more important issues. Quite possibly the most important was the issue of big tech censorship, something which I'm sure we have all already felt quite acutely and we will continue to feel. That is an issue which perhaps could have been the defining issue of the Trump presidency. It is certainly something that his most ardent supporters would have benefited the clearest from, and it is something which would have allowed him and his supporters to push their agendas much more easily if he could have done something about the censorship. But despite all the monitoring and the possibility that it could have helped him in re-election quite a bit, he never really ended up doing anything about the issue substantive. There are, of course, other similar issues that he never did nearly as much as he should or could have. One notable issue is the border wall. He did have some progress on that, but not nearly as much as he should have. Perhaps his greatest accomplishment is that he certainly did manage to reduce immigration by quite significant rates, even prior to the current world crisis. But at the end of the day, that hardly even matters that much if it can just be turned around by the next administration. And that is why the tech censorship is one issue which really would have been beneficial if he could have actually got concrete things done there, new guidelines and standards in place, there might have been some chance that those could not just be undone by the next administration. And that also would have given him and his supporters some chance to build the cultural force that's behind them. Again, there were other things that he did, but he only ever really half did, 
that really could have been great if he focused on them more. Here I'm thinking of things like his executive order against critical race theory or threatening to cut off funding to some major universities. Those issues were particularly important because they went right to the heart of the current ideological system, and they were one of the few things that actually had some chance of uprooting the current ideological hegemony. But did he ever actually cut off funding to any university? Was there ever actually any serious changes in any major universities? No, not really. And the executive order on critical race theory is almost guaranteed to be overturned soon, and one year without it will hardly have made much of a difference. Now, okay, I don't know, it probably seems like I'm being very harsh here on Donald Trump. My point here isn't that Trump was a really awful president. My point isn't that he failed in everything he was trying to do. And my point isn't that everything he did do was useless. None of those statements are true. Trump accomplished far more than, honestly, I could have expected from almost anyone in his position. The point isn't so much that he accomplished so little. The point is how incredibly difficult it is for anyone in his position to really accomplish anything. His slogan, Drain the Swamp, is a quite useful one here. He thought he was just trying to drain a swamp, when really it was a whole rotten ocean of decay that he was going up against. It wasn't just a couple crazy radical Democrats that he had to deal with. It was the entirety of the Democratic Party, along with the entirety of the civil service, and academia, and media, and many other institutions that he had to deal with. If he ever did realize just how difficult it is to make real change in government, it was far too late. But on this very issue, The issue of how deep the corruption goes in government, how deep the ideological hegemony is, this really is where the real victory that Trump managed to win comes through. At this point, it looks like the most important legacy of the Trump administration, and the most important thing that he accomplished, was waking up a large section of the public to this very fact that real power is not only held, or not even really principally held, by elected politicians. Rather, the real power is held by the people who construct the ideological hegemony, and by the people who run the civil service and all the organs of government that are relied upon for its daily operation. And conservatives of all stripes also are now far more aware that getting judges appointed is nowhere near as important as it has seemed to be. Republicans now have six appointees on the Supreme Court, and they've hardly been able to deliver Trump any significant wins thus far. Will they make slightly more conservative rulings than past judges? Yeah, sure, probably. But will they ever really be the salvation that conservatives have been claiming they would be for decades now? And this is another point where I could also criticize Trump. His Supreme Court picks were not as good as they could have been. But again, that's sort of missing the point. The point isn't that the judges aren't quite conservative enough. The point is that the entire system is arrayed in such a way to try to prevent conservative justices from ever really being effective in the first place. Maybe, as more people become aware of the real nature of power in the future, actual political change might be possible. And if that does happen, Donald Trump will have played no small part in helping that have come about. Praise the Lord, O my soul. In my life I will praise the Lord. I will sing to my God as long as I shall be. Put not your trust in princes, in the children of men, in whom there is no salvation. His spirit shall go forth, and he shall return into his earth. In that day all their thoughts shall perish. Blessed is he who hath the God of Jacob for his helper, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all things that are in them, who keepeth truth forever, who executeth judgment for them that suffer wrong, who giveth food to the hungry, the Lord looseth them that are fettered. The Lord enlighteneth the blind, the Lord lifteth up them that are cast down, the Lord loveth the just. The Lord keepeth the strangers, he will support the fatherless and the widow, and the ways of the sinners he will destroy. The Lord shall reign forever, 
thy God, O Zion, unto generations and generations. Thanks for watching. Please donate to my Patreon or Subscribestar if you enjoy this content. And please remember to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. And please share these videos with anyone who you think will enjoy them. And a special thanks to my donors, yourself, Siphius Rex, Lita, Quo Pregranator, Haxorius, Adzutko, Josiah, King of Evil Florida and the Moon, Seth Apex, Richard, Cringe Walker, Zian Harris, Thomas Thomist, Windowlick, Augustine, and Skytoucher. Thanks everyone again for watching, and goodbye.